Uh, that was the Attorney General Sessions. Uh, you know, we still have this issue about whether or not he is going to be held in contempt. The people that are leading the way are the House Intel Committee Chair Devin Nunes, Freedom Caucus member uh, Jim Jordan, Freedom Caucus Chairman Mark Meadows. Uh, Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio joins us now. He's been extremely outspoken about the increasing overreach of not only Mueller's special counsel, but the inaction of the Department of Justice, the Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, as it relates to handing over documents. Uh, they are slow walking everything. They're putting in redactions in the name of national security that turn out to be proven not true. Comey is the perfect example. Last week, uh, they had a redaction about Jim Comey basically saying that, oh, nobody thought that General Flynn lied. Well, why did he get in trouble for lying, and why did they claim it was a national security issue? So the slow walking, the noncompliance, the redactions have now led to a crisis point where the, the Congress may hold the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General in contempt of Congress. Jim Jordan is with us with the Freedom Caucus. Mr. Speaker, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Congressman, great to, uh, great to talk to you. Good to be with you, Sean, and you are, you are so right. We should be pursuing contempt uh, for both Mr. Sessions and Mr. Rosenstein in my judgment. How is it, uh, uh, Sean, that the New York Times can get Michael Cohen's financial records and the Inspector General of Treasury has now said he's going to look into how they did that. So the New York Times can get Michael Cohen's financial records, and yet we can't get stuff as a separate and equal branch of government from the executive branch? That is what's driving everyone crazy. And so certainly, Devin is right. If they're not going to give us the information, um, then we should pursue contempt against both of them. But explain the slow walking. Explain the ridiculously high level of redactions, how many times they claim national security, and it's been proven... It was not a national security reason for the redaction. And the outright just denial and refusal to hand over to Congress what constitutionally you have the authority to see because of checks and balances and co-equal branches of, of power yeah. and congressional oversight. No, you gave the best example. They, 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 it was, a, no, you can't see the Comey memos. They, 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 they held that up. They slow walked to that. It was like pulling teeth. And finally, when we see him. Uh, th th there was really nothing classified there. And then the example you just used as well with uh, uh, the, the House Intelligence Committee report where they tried to redact and say that, oh, uh, Michael Flynn actually didn't lie. Uh, every agent who interviewed him said they felt he was being uh, straightforward, and yet they tried to uh, – uh, they had that redacted in the initial report. So that's how they operate. But the best example, Sean, was last week when this federal judge said, I want to see – the August 2nd memo, and you got two weeks to get it to me. Mr. Meadows and I sent a letter five weeks ago to Rod Rosenstein, and we said, show us the August 2nd, uh, August 2nd memo, which in some way modifies the May 17th memo that outlined the scope of the inspector, or excuse me, of the special counsel, Robert Mueller. He did this August 2nd memo. We want to see what that says. It's all redacted. We want to see what that says. So we asked for it five weeks ago. The federal judge asked for it last week. Now you have two branches of government, the legislative branch and the judicial branch, both asking to see something so the American can, uh, people can know exactly the scope of the investigation into the president they elected. That's the kind of treatment we've been getting from the, from the Justice Department, and that's what's got to change. And if it doesn't, it's time for contempt. Well, and how soon do you think? Uh, it looks like we're, we're now hitting that point here. Um, yes. And, 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 and what is Congress asking for? Congress has a constitutional role to play in this. And that is oversight. You know, I love what the judge in the Manafort case uh, said on Friday, where n no American wants unfettered president, uh, pr uh, unfettered power, be it the president, be it Congress, be it the judicial branch. That's why we have checks and balances. Yes. Congress is constitutionally required to 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 use their oversight to make sure there's no abuse of power. If Rod Rosenstein had his way. Well, we know that the Nunes memo never would have come out because he was begging Paul Ryan yes. up till the final hour not to release that information that we had a right to know. Lying to a FISA judge in a FISA application, withholding information to a FISA judge, using one party, Hillary Clinton, one presidential candidate's bought and paid for Russian lies and presenting it as the bulk of information before a FISA court, that seems to me to be a crime. Yes, yes. Well, well look... Rod Rosenstein's name has never been on a ballot. Who elected Rod Rosenstein? No one. You have the legislative branch, and I actually asked Mr. Rosenstein in person about that August 2nd memo. You should have seen how defensive he got then. 
So now you have, Sean, this this idea where you have the legislative branch who's asked for this information so the American people can see what, in fact, is the scope, what, in fact, is the framework for the investigation into the president that they elected. And you also now have the judicial branch wanting to see the exact same document. And you have Rod Rosenstein and the Justice Department saying, we don't want to show it to you. We got 70 percent of it redacted. That is what's wrong. And remember this, too. The Justice Department could have told us all kinds of information that they didn't they didn't disclose. We had to go find it the hard way. Like, did, did the Justice Department tell us that Daniel Richmond, the guy Jim Comey leaked information through, was actually a special government employee at the Justice By Department? By the way, he no. only said he, he only said he leaked to one person. It turned out it was him. It was yes. Patrick Fitzgerald and, and another guy. that And all three of them are now his lawyers. How convenient. Yeah. So, I, so we're at a point now where the, I think the best thing to happen is for the president of the United States to tell Jeff Sessions, to tell Rod Rosenstein explicitly and directly, give the United States Congress everything they are asking for. Transparency is good. It's good for the American people to see what's going on. It's good for the American people to know the scope of the investigation into the president that they elected, who's duly elected, who was, whose name was on a ballot. So the president of the United States should, in fact, tell Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein, give the United States Congress the documents and the information that they are requesting so we can get answers to the American people. All right, let me ask you, because Paul Ryan is leaving, and I have always said, and I stand by this right now, that but for the Freedom Caucus, uh, there are very few people I trust in Washington today. And if you're a conservative, as I am a conservative, I look to people like you and Mark Meadows, and, and frankly, I've got to put Devin Nunes in that group. I don't know if he's a member of the Freedom Caucus, but I, I put you guys at the top of people that are actually getting the job done. We wouldn't have known about the FISA abuse. We wouldn't be pursuing the fact that not only did Hillary Clinton commit crimes and was information taken from foreign intelligence sources off of that mom-and-pop shop server that she acid-washed and bleach bit and, and broke mm-hmm. up her devices on after she violated the Espionage Act, but I then look at the the treatment that she received from Comey and Strzok and Page and Strzok who interviewed her and the exoneration written before the investigation. Did you ever hear of exonerations being written months before you interview the, 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 the people involved in a case? Yeah, before you interview all the witnesses, and before they had interviewed the key witness, who was in fact Secretary Clinton. Oh, you're right. Well, I've no, never heard. Well, why would they begin that in early May and they don't interview her till July? Yeah, I mean, look, James Comey messed that investigation up from start to finish. We all know that. We suspected the fix was in after we saw the struck, uh, struck page text messages. We knew the fix was in. And, and as, you've, as you have pointed out, and you've been great on this. Clear back last fall and, and sooner, you've been great on this, this entire thing. But remember last fall, Sean, when, when we, we had the FBI director in front of the Judiciary Committee and it was we had just learned that the struck and page text messages had come out and they were supposedly kicked off the Mueller team because of their anti-Trump bias. And we all suspected it has to be something more. And you were talking about we were talking about it. We said it has to be something more. And our, our gut told us it was about the dossier. And then lo and behold, all the information on the dossier came out. And we found out that, in fact, was a key thing taken to the FISA court. So you've been right on this from from the get go. We've been right on this from the get go linking it all to that to that dossier document um, that's the problem and again that's why we're at a point where it is time for the justice department to give congress give the judge who's asking for a, the, 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 the document as well give us the information that we're asking to get all right so let me ask you this i keep hearing from my sources that there is bombshell information about people like rod rosenstein and that's one of the reasons they are slow walking, using redactions, not complying with subpoenas. Is that true? I don't I don't know what the information is. I do know that it's amazing the the roadblocks, the slow walking that they remember Sean, they told us when 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 uh, Congressman Meadows and I met with Mr. Rosenstein, they told us they think the approximate number of documents that the Judiciary and the Oversight Committee are entitled to see relative to the investigation into Clinton and the investigation into uh, stuff dealing with 2016 and 2017, they think the approximate number of documents is 46,000 documents. To date, over seven months, we've received 9,000. At that pace, we're going to be midway into President Trump's second term before we ever get the information that they, even they say we are entitled to receive. I, should that should is the problem should Rod Rosenstein be fired? I mean, it's, at some point, uh, I know articles of impeachment have been drawn up, 
Do you see any reason at this point that he should be impeached? I think the, I think the best thing that can happen now is if they don't change, and, and look, our patience is, is almost completely gone now. I know Devin's is, is, is the same way. Then we should pursue contempt. And frankly, I think the best thing is, though, for the President of the United States, as the guy who name was on a ballot, who was elected by the American people, who is the head of the executive branch, to tell his, his people who work for him to tell Rod Rosenstein and Jeff Sessions, give the Congress what they're asking for. Then we'll get the answers. Then we'll know the questions you just asked. We'll, we'll know the answers to those. And more importantly, the American people will know. Are you going to run for speaker? The plan is, uh, if and when there's a race, I plan to do that. There is not one right now. And as I've said on the House floor, more important than who the speaker is uh, next year is what we do this year. And what we do this year is get the, get the answers to these key questions that you've been raising on your show uh, to build the border security wall, to make the tax cuts permanent, to reform welfare, the things we told the American people we were going to do when, when they elected us in 2016. So that's what I'm focused on. But if and when the race uh, it happens, I plan to be a part of it. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back more with Freedom Caucus member, Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio. All right, as we continue, Congressman Jim Jordan, who uh, is running for speaker, apparently, He's also with the Freedom Caucus, former chairman of the Freedom Caucus, as we continue. Uh, there are rumors that uh, Paul Ryan may get out a little early, maybe as early as Memorial Day. Is there any truth to that? Are you hearing rumblings of that? Uh, there's been that talk, but I don't think he should. And, um, uh, you know, I think... Uh, I think Why the not? Been clear that well, he, that he, that why, he, why not? I mean, he does, if he, he's retiring. Let's have the I race think, now. I think the, uh, I think the speaker's indicated, Sean, that he's, he plans on staying for the remainder of, the, of, of this Congress. What do you make of what the president did by withdrawing from the Iranian deal yesterday? I think uh, another campaign promise kept, and I think keeping promises means a lot, and I do believe the Republican Party, you excluded, and the Freedom Caucus excluded, need to keep their promises, and I think that I was happy with the rescission that we had on, uh, yeah. Mike, uh, we had on Mulvaney yesterday. We were talking yeah. about that. Uh, nobody liked the omnibus bill, but so it's a good start, but... You know, I still think more needs to be done on health care, and I think the border wall needs to be funded fully. Of course. You're, you, I couldn't say it better. It never hurts to keep your word, and this president has done that. He said he was going to put the embassy in Jerusalem. It's going to happen next week. He said he was going to get out of the Iran deal. It, 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 he's going to get out of the Iran deal. He said he was going to cut taxes. We've cut taxes. He said he was going to put a, a good guy on the Supreme Court. We've got Gorsuch on the Supreme Court. He said he was going to take on ISIS. ISIS is, in fact, backpedaling. He said the economy was going to grow when he was president. The economy is growing. We've got the lowest unemployment in 17 years. That's pretty darn You wouldn't know it listening to CNN, but that's pretty darn good. Uh, uh, pretty darn good. A uh, little rocket man talking about denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that's another big thing. What do you think about of the course. hostages being released? I mean, Of course. This is like Reagan. When, when you say what you mean, mean what you say, and you back it up, good things happen in, in uh, the, the, the fact that the, the leaders of North and South Korea actually got together two weeks ago. Who would have thought that was going to happen on the Korean Peninsula? The fact that the hostages were released. I mean, you, we could keep going. Again, you listen to the mainstream press, you wouldn't know it, but you listen to Sean Hannity, you get the truth. And, and, and that's, those are good is things Robert that Mueller, because of the leadership. When, when you heard that judge on Friday excoriate, Robert Mueller's team, and they're putting the screws to Manafort, and this has nothing to do with Trump-Russia collusion, and, and why would a tax issue from 2005 to 2007 have anything to do with anything except that you really want to use Paul Manafort, put the screws to Manafort, you want him to sing uh, so that you can follow up on a prosecution or potential impeachment of Donald Trump. I was stunned at how... A truthful the judge was, and how right on the mark he was. I, w I had the exact same reaction, and specifically, I focused in on that judge says, "I want to see that August." Because re remember, the, remember what's going on here, Sean. May seventeenth, Rod Rosenstein writes the memo saying, "Mr. Mueller, here is the scope of your special counsel investigation." All I know is that judge says, "I want to see it." The same thing that Mark and I had sent five weeks earlier, saying we want to see it. We got a letter back from the Justice Department saying. You know, take a it's hike. Outrageous. But it was interesting. We yeah. got the letter back t telling us to take a hike, and two days yeah. later, the judge says, I want to see the same thing. Good. Well, hopefully, we'll get to see it as well. All right. Uh, perhaps future Speaker of the House, Jim Jordan of Ohio. Uh, thank you, sir. We appreciate you all bet. that you're doing every day.